What's going on guys, this is Junior here and today I'm going to show you how you can build this application which is a user catalog and we're going to be using an API called the random user API so that we can build this beautiful UI. Now this is only going to be front end so we're not going to be dealing with the back end and this course is to cover some of the core concepts of Angular so that you understand how you can use it to build your application. So as you can see here I have a list of users that I'm pulling from the API and I'm displaying them on the table and then at the top here I have some information about the API that I'm using which is the random user API and we're going to talk more about this in a minute. So I have the list of all the users that I'm pulling and I can also click on a user and then see the detailed information about the user and I also have at the bottom the map of the location of the user. So as you can see here we have the map here and we have Marie's location which is in the middle of the ocean but that's because the API just gives us some random coordinates so it can be anywhere on the planet. But the point is you'll be able to use the latitude and longitude so the coordinates of the user and then plot it on the map which is something that I haven't shown before. So I'm going to show you how you can use some map APIs and then incorporate that in your Angular application. And if I zoom out here a little bit you can see that we have this map and this person seems to be in the Philippine Sea as you can see here. And if you scroll up a little you can also edit the information so we can change the information if you want and then we can save the changes. Obviously, we're not really saving this information in the back end because we don't own the back end, but I'm gonna show you how you can build this functionality so that you can have it in your application if you want to. And then here I have the user ID, the username of the user, and then the name of the user and their profile picture. And I can also go back to all the users. So if I click on this person, for example, you can see that it's the same page and then I have their information. And then at the bottom, I have their location here. This person seems to be not in the middle of the ocean and they are, uh, let's zoom out a little. Okay, so they're somewhere in Antarctica. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. I also have an outline that I have here and that I prepare. So some of the stuff we're gonna be going on just to give you guys a quick overview of what to expect in this course. So introduction is going to be just what you need to know and what this course is about, which we have already been doing. So make sure you have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, the web, client and server communication, and then web APIs. And then of course, TypeScript, since Angular uses TypeScript by default. So make sure you understand things like classes, generics, modules, interfaces, and things like that than TypeScript. And then moving on, we're going to do some setup. So I'm going to quickly talk about what you need to have for your software requirement text editor, web browser, I'm going to be using Chrome by the way, and then your command line. And you can use whatever command line you want. I'm just going to show you what I'm using. And then we're just going to quickly go through this setup because we don't necessarily need to have a lot of software installed. And then I'm going to move on to talk about components. So we're going to talk about what components are, data binding, so string interpolation, property binding, event binding, life cycle. And then we're going to move on to services. So we're going to talk about services and uh, we're going to build a service and then fetch the users with that service. We'll be able to use that service in many different components or many different parts of the application. And then I'm gonna talk about directives. So we have built-in directives, we have structural directives. We're gonna talk about directives and what they are and how to use them. And then we're gonna move on to router. As you can see, we can move to different pages in the application. So I'm gonna show you how to set up your router, configure everything, and then how to get activated routes and route parameters. And also talk about the router outlet, as you can see here, because it's pretty important. And then I'm gonna talk about something that I don't see a, a lot of people talk about, which is Resolver. So Resolver, they're very, very important in Angular. And they greatly enhance the user experience. So I'm going to talk about what resolvers are and how to use them. And we're going to build one and I'm going to show you a very specific scenario. And that's going to just open your mind about like the different cases where you might want to use the resolver in your Angular application. And then moving on, we'll be talking about RxJX. We can't talk about Angular without talking about RxJS or reactive programming. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use RxJS to transform the data because the information that we're getting from the API, is like a lot of information. So we'll need to clean this information and present it the way that we want to present it. And that's what I'm going to show you um, how to do this using RxJS. And of course, the map integration. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use this map API called leaflet. And then we're going to incorporate it in our Angular application so that we can show the location of the user. The API also gives the coordinates of the user, just some random coordinates, which is why we had like some of the users in the middle of the ocean. But the point is you'll be able to use the coordinates. So the geo information of the user and then plot that on a map, which is super important because having a map in your application or map applications in general, they're very popular these days. So this is everything that we're going to be covering in the course. And we do have a lot to cover. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. 
So let's quickly go over the software requirements that we need to have for this course. And really just three things that we're going to need. So a text editor, a web browser, which is in this case is going to be Chrome for me and then a terminal. And I'm going to go over everything here. The first software you need is Node.js because if you're building Angular application, you need to have Node.js install and you need Node.js so that you can install the Angular CLI, as you can see here, because we're going to use the Angular CLI to manage the application. So install Node.js, whatever version that you see here. And then once you have that installed, then you can run in npm install dash g and then at angular cli and this is going to install the angular cli for you and that's pretty much everything that you need to do for this and then for my text editor so as you can see here text editor id i'm going to be using visual studio code but again feel free to use whatever you want but in my case it's going to be visual studio code and uh for my terminal it's going to be cmd -er. i'm on a windows computer i was going to record this on my linux computer but i was having some issues with the recording software so i'm just doing it on my windows computer but in my day-to-day -day work in my day-to-day -day development i'm using a linux computer because i just i just like it better so again software you need to have node.js and then install the angular cli and then i'm using visual studio code for my text editor and then for my terminal, I'm using the CMD -er emulator. But again, feel free to use whatever you like. I'm just showing you what I'm using. The only thing that's really required is Node.js and then install the Angular CLI. But you can choose your own text editor and your own terminal or command line. So we're done with the setup. We know what we need to have. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to creating the components and then start building the Angular application. So I'm going to switch over to my terminal just to make it a little bigger. All right, clear the screen. So I already have Node.js and I have the Angular CLI. So I think if I do ng dash dash version, that should give you all the information. So I have the Angular CLI as you can see here, and then I have node 16, 14, 2. So this is all good. So now all I need to do is to create a new Angular application and then generate the first component. So to do this, I'm going to say ng new. So I'm using the ng command, so the Angular CLI command. And then let's just call this uh, user API catalog. And this is going to ask us some questions and we're just going to answer the questions and it's going to generate all the files for us. So press enter. Do I want routing? Yes, we're using routing in this. And I'm just going to stick with CSS. And it's going to go ahead and generate all the files and generate the project. So I'll come back when this is done. All right, looks like it's over. So clear the screen again, and I'm gonna go into user. And what I want to do is just open this with Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna do code and a dot, and then I want to do ng serve. So we're gonna start the application again, and then open Visual Studio Code in this folder. So I'm gonna bring this over. So this is the brand new application, and we're gonna wait for the application to start, and then we're gonna check it out in the browser. I'm gonna answer yes to this question, and the first time is gonna take just a little bit more. Oh, never mind. But it's gonna be faster after the first time. So application is running on localhost 4200, so I can just copy this and just go here. I'm gonna close everything else because I don't need them anymore. So close, 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 and just paste this here and press enter. And we have a brand new Angular application. So brand new Angular application, I haven't done anything in it. So let's go ahead and generate our first component. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring back the terminal and I'm gonna stop this using Control C, Control L to clear the screen. And I'm gonna do ng generate component. I want to put this in the component folder so I can do component forward slash and then the name of the component. So in this case, that's going to be user because we want to show the list of all the users in that one component or in that one piece of UI or one page, if you want to call it that. And then I want to do skip test because I don't want the test file. So we're going to say skip test. Another way we can do this, since you can see that this is a lot to type, we can do ng generate component just like that. So we can do ng GC, so generate component, and then we pass in the folder where we want to put the component, and then we pass in the name of the component, and then I'm skipping the test file because we're not writing any tests in this course. So I'm gonna press enter, and you can see that it generated three files for me. So the HTML file, the TS file, and the CSS file, and it update the app modules as well. So I'm gonna do ng serve just to bring the application back up and then bring over the text editor. Okay, so I'm gonna expand the source folder, the app folder, and you can see now we have the component folder. And if I open that up, you can see here we have the user components. So the users component CSS file, the users component HTML file, and the users component TS file. And if we take a look in the app modules, what it did is it just added this in the declarations array. So whatever component 
content that we created or we generated, then it's going to automatically edit in here, which is the main module of the application. And all this is doing is registering this component into the Angular context, if you will. So the Angular CLI is smart enough to know that if we're going to generate a component and we have one module, then we're just going to add that component inside that module because that's the only one that we had. If we had different modules, it would ask us the question, where do we want to import that specific component? Like which module you want it to be in? But since we have one, then it updated this uh, main module. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. One thing I want to point out is I'm not going to go through this in this specific order that they are. It's more or less in order, but it's not completely in order. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Like we're not going to follow this exactly as it is here. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is to set up routing. So let's bring back the text editor. Let's just go ahead and generate the user details component. So let's stop this again. And in this case, oops, didn't want to do this. I want to call this user detail. Okay, so that's going to be the user detail component so that we don't have to generate this later. And I also need this so that I can set up the routing so that we can see these different pieces of components in the application. So let's press enter and generate that. So user detail and then run the application again. So in the serve, and then we're going to minimize this. So in the component folder, we have the user detail component. So the user detail files are here and then the users component. So we're going to show the list of users using this component. And then the user detail page is going to be using this user detail component. So the next thing I want to do at this point is to set up routing for these two different components. So when we go into the application, if we don't pass any URL or we pass in the user's URL, then it should take us to this component. If they pass in a specific ID, then it should take them to this component with the specific user details in it. So let's go ahead and set up our routing. One of the reasons why I like using Angular to build my UI applications is because Angular is a full framework. Like it's a complete framework and it has pretty much all the features that you can ask for in a JavaScript framework. Now that's not to say that I don't like React. I use React a lot, but I also like to use Angular because everything is built in and you rarely ever have to go outside and then install some third party library or something like that because all the functionalities, all the components are built into it. So to set up our route, we're going to have to go to the file that was created for us because we said that we're going to have routing in the application. And this is the app routing module right here. So this app module is really just a class with a decorator. So in Java, they call those annotation, but in TypeScript, they call them decorator, but they're just metadata that brings more functionalities to classes and functions, etc. This is pre-built. So we didn't write this code. The Angular CLI put all this code in for us. And if we look for this app routing module, you'll see that you can find it in here and it's being imported here in this array here. Now we could define the route exactly inside of the app module, but we just make it a little cleaner or the Angular team decided that this should be better if it's in a separate file. So they define this app routing module and then just pass in this annotation, do this setup here and then export this class. And they just import this class in this array here as a dependency to this module. But they're both modules. The app routing module is a module, the main module of the application, the app module also a module. So you can import and export modules, as you can see clearly in this example. So let's go into the app routing module. So since everything is already hooked up and imported, all we have to do is to define the routes in the application that we want here. And the routes are defined using objects. So I'm going to put opening and closing curly braces. And the first thing you need to define is the route. So if I do control space, you can see all the options that we can pass in here. And one of those options is the path. So I'm going to select that and we're going to define the users one. So we're going to say users. So if the path is users in the browser, then what component do we want to load? So here again, we're going to pass in the component and this is going to be the users component. So we're going to say users component and that's going to be the component we're going to load. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and then paste it here. So the second route is going to be to go to a user. So if we go to user, then we're going to load the user component. Uh, that's going to be the user detail. So user detail component. Okay, so pretty standard stuff. We go to users in the browser or slash users, then it's going to load the users component. We go to user, 
it's going to load the user detail component. Another thing we're going to need to do when we load the user detail component is to pass in the ID of the user. And the way we're going to handle this is by putting a forward slash here, a colon, and then we're going to give it a name. So for example, you can say user ID or just uh, ID. In our case, we're going to be loading a UUID. So I'm going to put UUID here. And later, I'm going to show you how we can capture this ID using uh, route parameters. Because whenever we're going to load this user detail component, we need to fetch this specific user by that ID and then get the user information and then show it in that specific component. One last thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste it down here. So whenever we have someone put in some route that doesn't exist, because right now we only have two, we want to catch that as well. So in here, I'm going to put two asterisks, uh, two. And then I'm going to say if they put any route that is not users or that is not user slash some ID or something, then it's going to be loading the user detail component. Or in this case, we would say maybe go back to the user component just like this. So that's what this last route is doing. And the order also matters. So make sure you put this at the very bottom of all your routes. So if they go to slash users, it's going to load the user component. If they go to slash user, then it's going to load the user detail component. And if they go to anything else, then it's also going to load the users component again. Now you can see that we're repeating ourselves here. So I have component here, user component, and I also have it down here, users component. So what we can do is instead of passing in a component, if I do control space, you can see that there's a redirect, redirect to. So I'm going to select that and I want to redirect to a specific route. In this case, that's going to be the users because that's that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm saying if they put in anything that's not users, they put in anything that is not user slash some ID or something, then we want to default to the user's route, which is going to load the user's component. So that's all we have to do for our routing. And like I said, everything is already hooked up in the app module. You can see it's being imported here, so we don't have to do anything else. Once we define those routes, then everything should be working. So let's go back to the browser. And you can see now it's navigated to the users component. Now you see that we're still seeing the same main page that we were seeing. But if you look at the bottom here, you can see it says users work. And if we go to forward slash user, forward slash some random ID, press enter, and you can see at the bottom again, it says user detail works. Now you might be wondering why are we not seeing the entire user detail or users component UI? Why are we still seeing this? And I'm going to show you why that is. So I'm going to open up the editor and I want to go back to the main page that is being loaded. So that's the app component here. So this page right here. So this entire page that you see here, that's what's being loaded in here in the browser. Okay. So this page is this right here. Now, if I go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and select everything here and then delete. And if we go back now, you'll see now we have a blank page. If we go back to the users, it's still blank. Now let's bring this back. And what I want to show you, I'm going to do control Z here to put everything back. The way that we say where we want to show the UI after we set up our routing is by using the router outlet. So that means that I don't need all this information. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all this. And all I'm going to say is whenever a route is loaded and the component is going to be loaded, we want to load it in this specific location. So we want to load it in the specific HTML. So the router outlet is being set here. So that's why the router outlet is really important because it tells Angular where to display a specific UI or a specific component or the UI of a component when a specific route is loaded. So now if we go back, you can see now we have users work. And if we go forward again to the user slash some random ID, then we have user details work. So we're no longer dealing with all of these other extra stuff that we didn't want to see before. So our routing is working. You can see now we can navigate. And if we go to some random path that doesn't exist and press enter here, you see that it takes us back to the users component because that's how we set it up. So if it goes to users, then users component, you go to user source forward slash some random ID. That could be anything because we're not doing anything with that information at this point. Press enter. User details is loaded. And if we go to anything that doesn't exist, so if we go to like some random path and press enter, then we're redirected to the users component. So our routing is set up. The next thing that I want to do is we're going to start taking a look at the API that we're going to use. So that's the random user API. And then we're going to start working on the service that we need so that we can fetch this data and then show it in the UI.
If you do a quick Google search for the random user API, one of the results should be the random user generator. So that's going to be the random user at me and just go ahead and click on that and it should take you to this page. So the random user generator, that's the API that we're going to be using. And if you scroll down a little, um, you can see they have some examples here and we have an example of the result. So whenever you fetch the data, this is the kind of result that we're going to have. And that's what we're going to be using here. So let's look at the main URL here. So this is the main URL. I'm going to just copy it and open it in a new tab. So this is the data that we're going to get whenever we fetch this API and then send the request to get information. And as you can see, there is a lot of information in there. So there is a lot of information about that user. So there's a gender, name, location, city, state, time zone, coordinates, uh, login information, date of birth, uh, registration information, phone number, and then pictures, etc. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can clean this data and just pick out the information that we want because we don't want all of this information and we also don't want one user so if you look at the result here which is on array i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see better so this is an array right this result here is an array and if i collapse this you can see that by default it's going to give us one user so you can see here that's just one user and this information down here this object down here this info object is just information about the actual api like the page the result and the seed no idea what that is but i guess some seed or something and then the version but what we can do here is we can pass in a question mark so we can say question mark well i have to put a forward slash first well you can see it coming up here so you put a forward slash and then you pass in result equal and then the number of users that you want now you can see that we have 10 users so if i can collapse all this you can see now we have 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we get 10 users. And that's how you specify that. So you go to the random user API and then you say for the result, so a request parameter, and you set it to whatever number you want. So I can say five here, and here we should have uh, just five users. So that's how we're gonna fetch all of the users that we want and then show the information of the specific user. And if you wanna learn more about the random user API, you can just go to the documentation link here. It's pretty well documented. I mean, it's a pretty simple API. There's not much going on with it. But one thing I like about it is the amount of information that they give about the user. You can see that they have, you know, salt and password, username, and they also have pictures and they have three different pictures. So thumbnail, medium, large pictures. They have cell phone information, registration, date of birth. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of information and you can really use it to build some cool application if you just want to test your applications and, and, and work with some users. And also very cool is the coordinate and I thought it was so cool that I decided to include the map API into this course so that I can show you how you can display this actual location using the uh, map API of uh, leaflet and that's what we're gonna be doing here so if you want to know more just go to the documentation here and you can scroll down and they explain everything to you so you can see here the result that I was talking about how you can specify how many results do you have and you can specify other things like the gender the password etc so it's pretty good for testing, so definitely you would give it a try if you guys are just building something and you just want to test with some users. Another cool thing I like about this is the user photos. You can see here they have a bunch of photos, which you can request as well. So if you just want some random user information, then you can just uh, use this and then generate some random user uh, pictures. So feel free to dive into the documentation and you can follow them, I guess, on uh, Twitter if you want. But this is the API that I'm going to be using to build this application. So now that we know what the API is, and we know what the data looks like. So let's go ahead and copy this link and then we're gonna set it up in our application and build a service to fetch this information. Let's go back to the course outline just for a few minutes, just so we can talk about Angular services. So Angular services are a central point where you can define a bunch of functionalities that you know that many different parts of the application are going to need to use. So instead of putting that one functionality and many different or many different functionalities and many different components, you can define one location where you put all of these functionalities and then whenever you need to use them, you just inject them in that specific component. And one very good use case for this is to use a service to fetch data you know that you can pass this data to many different components if they need it so services are used to centralize similar functionalities that you can share across different components or different parts of your application and one very good use case for services is to use them to fetch data and then pass this data to different components by just injecting the service in there and then call the functions in the service and that's what we're going to be doing because we don't want to fetch the information of the users inside of the users component we want to dedicate that task to a specific service 
service. And if the user detail component needs to get user information, then we can call that same service to get that same user information. So let's go back to the application and I'm actually going to bring up the terminal and I'm going to go ahead and stop the application, clear the screen. And I want to generate a service this time. So using the Angular CLI again, I can just do ng generate service and I want to put everything in the service folder. So I'm going to say service for slash I'm going to call it user. So that's going to be user service.ts file. And I also want to skip the test. So I'm going to say skip test because I don't want the test file. Press enter and it created the user.service.ts file. And then we're going to run the application again. And then let's go back to the IDE. So I'm going to close this, close this module, close the routing. And we see the service folder now. And in here we have the user service. So the first thing you notice that the Angular CLI did for us is to define this um, decorator again. So the injectable, this is going to denote this class as a service and make it injectable into different classes. So you'll be able to use the functionalities in this class by just doing a dependency injection in the other files or in the other classes that you have. So that's what this injectable is doing. And this provided in root is just going to provide this in the root module. And in this case, since we only have one module, so that's the app module here. So we don't even have to import it in the providers array here because we're saying put it in the root module which is that one module that we have here so that's what this provided and is doing so now what we need to do um, we need to fetch so we're gonna say fetch users right because we need to be able to fetch all the users and the second thing we're gonna need to do is fetch one user using the user ID, or in this case, that's a UUID. Okay, so these are the two functionalities that we need to export from this service. We need to be able to fetch all the users and we need to be able to fetch one user by passing in the user ID. So to do this, we're going to need to make some HTTP requests so that we can request the API, the random user API. So let's just define a private and we're going to make this read only and that's going to be the API URL. So I'm going to say API URL and let's just define this as a string and set this equal to the URL that we got. So let's go back here. Hopefully I have it copied. Nope. Uh, HTTPS colon double four slash random user that me for slash API. Okay. So this is the base for that specific API. So HTTPS colon number four slash random user that me that API. So let me copy this and just paste it here just to make sure I get the right one. Okay. So this is the API that we're going to uh, fetch the data from. So let's uh, go back here and bring back the editor. So we have this defined here and we're just going to use it to make HTTP requests and then fetch the data from the API. So before we can start using the HTTP client that we have in Angular, there's some setup that we have to do. It's not a whole lot of setup, but there's some setup we have to do. So instead of the app module, we need to import it as a module because it is a module. So we're going to go here and do HTTP client module. So this is the module that we need to import. And I'm just going to go up here and import it because it's not being imported by itself. So import and in here we want to import the HTTP client module. And it's coming from at Angular common HTTP. Okay, so make sure you have that imported. And this is how you tell Angular that you're going to be using the HTTP client by just importing the HTTP client module. So we're done here. We can close this. And then in here, we can import or inject the HTTP client by just going inside of the constructor, give it a name, and HTTP client. Okay, coming from the same package right here. So now we can use this in our function. So these two functions that we're going to define so that we can fetch the data from this API. So let's go down here and we're going to say get users. Um, we can pass in the size that we want, which is going to be a number. And by default, we're going to set it to 10. Okay, so you can set that to whatever number you want. And this is going to return an observable of any for now. Okay, we're going to change that later uh, because in TypeScript, you have to make sure you type everything. And we just have to return this that HTTP that get. So we're going to send a get request again, pass in the same any here for the type and pass in the URL. So I'm going to pass in a string literal. So dollar sign open and close curly braces this that API URL. And remember, we have to pass in a forward slash. So we'll go outside here forward slash a question mark result equal. And then again, 
dollar sign open and close make this go away so you guys can see and then here we can pass in the size that we just defined so we pass in the size here if you don't pass it then it's going to be 10 by default and this is how we're going to specify that we want 10 users so this is the first function that we need and the second one uh let's just go ahead and copy this and paste it down here and this is going to be get user this is also going to take parameter and this is going to be the uid of the user also a number and by default we can just pass in one and instead of result here we're gonna say uid equal and pass in the uid here okay so these are the two functions they're both sending get request and we're just specifying the result size for the first one and specifying the id or the uid for the second one for the user so now we can go ahead and use these two functions in the components and then fetch the data that we need so remember we have the component folder here and then we have the users component and we have the user details component so in the users component we're going to fetch the data so we're going to fetch all the users which means we're going to call the get users and in the user detail we're going to call the get user so that we can show the detail for that specific user by that uid so I'm going to go inside of the users component and then open the TS file. And in here we have the on init. So that is called a lifecycle hook that we already implementing. And whatever code that we have in this ng on init is going to run after the component has been initialized. So since we want to call one of these functions when we load this users component, then we can put the code inside of this function. So the ng on init, which we're forced to define when we implement the on init. And then whatever code is in here is going to be executed after the component is initialized. So we'll be able to see the call that we make to the backend or to the random user API. And then maybe we can like log the result or something like that, just so that we can see the result. So to do this, the first thing we need to do is to inject the service. Remember the service is injectable. So we can go ahead and inject it inside of this class and then call this first function. So let's do that right now. So let's go in here. So in the constructor, we're gonna say private, uh, give it a name. So user service and give it the type of user service. Make sure this is imported. Now we can uh, put the code in here. So here we can see whenever the component is initialized, we're gonna call the user service and then we're gonna call the get users and we can pass in uh, to 15, just so we can see something different. And then here we need to subscribe. Okay, so subscription is really important because if you don't subscribe, then the code won't even fire because this is how you listen to the result. So that's what this subscription means. We're gonna make an HTTP request, but if we don't subscribe to it, which means if we don't want to be notified, whenever there's a response that comes back, then Angular is not even gonna fire the observer boy at all. So you have to make sure that you subscribe. Like if I leave this like this, like if I do this, so this code won't fire. Like this function will not be called whenever this component is initialized, even though we have this line of code here. So it's really important that you subscribe. This is how you say, hey, notify me whenever there is a result. So if there is a result, so let's say we're gonna call it result and give it a type of any for now, then we want to execute some code. So here we're gonna say, uh, for example, um, let's just console.log, whatever that result is. So now if we go back to the browser, we should see that we have 15 users being logged in the console. So let's go back and right click inspect, and we want to go to the console. And you can see I have the object here coming from line 16. So this is the user's component. Let's just go ahead and refresh this. Okay, so here's the result. So we have 15 in the array, and then we have the info, which is the API information. So the result and the info. So the info, one page, 15 result, the seed, the version, and then the actual results. So the users, which is 15 in this case and you can see they're all here. So we were able to successfully send the request to the backend, send an HTTP request, and then get the result to the front end. So now all we need to do is to display this information in the UI instead of logging it here in the console. But there's one thing we need to take care of before we can do that. So if I expand all of this information, for example, so let's take the first user, for example, expand this registered and picture and expand everything else, uh, okay? You can see that this is a lot of information. Okay, so you can see that we have a lot of information about that specific user. Now we can step through this and then grab just the information that we need and then display it in the UI. But the approach that I wanna take is, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna take this information and then clean it up and only get or only pick out the information that we actually want. Instead of having to deal with this huge object with all of these properties. And you will have to do this a lot because a lot 
of times whenever you're building an application, the APIs that you're using, you didn't build them. So they come in different shapes and forms and they have all kinds of data. Sometimes they have the data you need, but then they have a bunch of extra stuff, which is the case in this example. Sometimes they don't have enough information. So you have to like do something on the fly to get the information that you need. So the point is you always going to have to modify some data from some API like most of the time. So what I want to show you is I'm going to show you how we're going to define what we want the user to be like or what we want the shape of the user to be like. And then we're going to take this data and then map every single user in this array into the user that we want with just the information that we want to display. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to the editor. So go back here. And uh, what I want to do is to define some interfaces because this is how you define shapes using TypeScript or one of the ways that you can do that. So inside of the app folder, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it interface. OK, so we're going to be defining some interfaces in there. Inside of this folder, I'm going to create a file and I'm going to call it user.interface.ts. OK, so that's going to represent the user exactly the way that we want it to be. And let me collapse this. So what I'm going to do is to export an interface and I'm going to call it user. And what we want to do is to just define everything that we want the user to have exactly the way that we want it to have without being influenced by what the API is giving us. So we're just defining our user exactly the way that we want it to be. So the first thing we want is the UID and that's going to be a string and we want the first name. Of course, it's going to be another string. We want the last name. That's going to be another string and we want the email, another string. And we want the username, another string. And we want the gender, another string. We want the address. Now we can represent the address as its own file or its own interface. But in this case, I'm just going to use one string as the address. So just like one long string that represents the address of the user. And we want the date of birth. So date of birth. And this is also going to be a string and the phone maybe another string um the image url so the image url another string and the coordinates remember we need to show the user location and we're going to define the coordinates but let's leave that for now oops control z okay so we don't have these coordinates uh, interface yet, but we're going to define it. So here we're just defining everything that we want our user to have. And we know that the API that we're using, it has all of this information. If there is something that it doesn't have, then at least we should be able to figure it out using the existing information that we already have. The point is some way, somehow we should be able to get all of this information using that one API. Either if we have to multiply something by something else or concatenate some characters together, we know one way or another, we can get all of this information and that's what I'm going to show you how we're going to do just to get rid of this area. Let's go ahead and define the coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and then paste it in the interface folder and then just give it another name. So I'm going to rename it to let's see coordinates. So coordinates interface that TS. Okay. And I'm just going to rename this as well. So that's going to be coordinate. And we only really need two things here. So I'm going to delete everything else and we need a latitude. So latitude, that's going to be a number and we need the longitude. So I'm going to change this also going to be a number. Okay. So now we have the coordinates. Let's go ahead and just import it here. Quick fix import. Okay. So that's the user. The user is going to have all of these properties and a coordinate property, which is going to have the longitude and the latitude that we need. The other thing that I want to be able to map is this information right here. So this info here where we have the page number, the number of results and the seed and the version. So we want to be able to map this information as well. So let's go back and I'm just going to go ahead and create another file here. I'm going to call it info that interface ts and again export interface info and here we just have to define these three things so the seed which is gonna be a string i believe the result is gonna be some number and then the page also a number and then we're gonna have the version i think it was a string but we can double check so 
So the result is a number, the page is a number, so these two numbers, and then we have the seed, which is a string, and then the version you can see here is a string, all right? So now we're mapping everything. So let me close everything here. Now the last thing that I wanna map is the response. So let's go again in here, and then we're gonna say response.interface.ts, and we're gonna export this again. So export interface, we're gonna call it response. We're gonna define what this response is gonna be like. So if you remember, if we look here, for example, so let me collapse this, you can see that, uh, bring this back up, just so you guys can see everything at the same time. So here you see we have the response, which is this entire thing, but it has a result, which is an array, and then it has the info, which is an object, which we just defined. So what we can do is to say, well, we know we're gonna have an info, which is gonna be of type info, so the info that we just defined, and we're gonna have a result, which for now, I'm gonna set it to an any array, okay? So the reason that I'm doing this is if I set it to the user interface that we just defined, so, make this a little bigger. If I set the result, which we know contains an array of all the users, if I set it to this interface, then that's not gonna work because we know that this result that has the users in it, it has other information that we don't want. This is our specific user. It's not this users that we have here because we know these user objects, they're like big objects, but we don't want all this. So for now, I'm gonna define this array as any, and then we're gonna map it to resemble exactly what we defined here. So we're gonna loop through all of these guys here, all of these users, and then map everything so that everything can look exactly like this user that we define, because that's all the information we care about in our application. We don't care about everything else. So I hope that makes sense. So now what we have to do is to go into the service where we're fetching all of this data and then manipulate the data even before the data is returned from the service right here. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. What I have done is I've put these two side by side so that I can show you how we're gonna map this to look exactly like we want it to look. So I'm gonna collapse some of these because we don't already have a lot of room here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define another function down there. So let me scroll up as much as I can. Okay, so what I'm gonna define is a private function and I'm gonna call it process uh, response. Okay, so response. And it's gonna take the response. So we're gonna say response which is gonna be of type response, oops. So that's the response that we defined from our interface. So make sure you pick it from our interface and it's also gonna return the same response. So we're gonna say response. And here we're gonna map this information to look exactly the way that we want it to look. And don't worry about these errors that you're seeing on the right. As we type, then these errors will, will go away. So what I wanna do is to return an object. So I'm gonna open and close curly braces. And uh, actually, I think if we do, uh, let's copy this because we need to see what's going on here. So maybe this wasn't the best idea. So let's duplicate this tab and let's just do this. Okay, so we can keep looking at this and then get the information exactly the way that we want it. So we know we're gonna get something like this, right? So we're gonna get a result and it's gonna have a bunch of users in it. And if we scroll to the very bottom, um, let's do forward slash result, uh, let's do result equals maybe like two, something we can manage, okay? So we know that the result is gonna be an array that's gonna contain the two users, so these two that I just collapsed, and then we're gonna have another object, which is gonna be the info, which we'll define, that's gonna have the information about the API itself. So now, in here, if I scroll up a little bit more, we can define all of this information. So we know we're gonna have an object, and I'm just gonna go on a new line for this. It's gonna have an info property, which is this info that we're looking at here. And the info property is another object. So we're gonna open and close curly braces. Oops. And I want to copy, so we're gonna say response.info. Okay, so we copy everything that we get from this response inside of this info property, which is just gonna be this, okay? So since we need all of this information because we're showing all of this information on the main page, then we just grab everything because we don't need to you know, map this or remove any information here. So we're grabbing everything, we're just making a copy using the spread operator. The next thing we need is the result. So we're gonna say result. Just so you remember, this is coming from the response, okay? So we know that we're gonna get a response, which is this entire thing, and it's gonna contain two main properties. It's gonna have a result, you can see here, if I zoom in a little, 
So we're gonna have a result, which is this result right here. Order doesn't matter here. And it's gonna have an info, which is this info right here. The info, it's pretty straightforward. We're getting everything. So all this information, all of this information, you can see here. So in the service, we just copy everything over. So we're creating a new object and using the spread operator, we're gonna copy everything from this response. So this entire thing, just put it in there with this property name info, which is gonna give us just this one object. So that is that for the information. So the info property. The next thing we know is we have to also map this result, which is gonna contain all of our users, but we know that our users are a mess. So if we expand the two users that we have here, we know that it's a lot of information, but we don't want all that information. So what we're going to do, we're gonna say, okay, so we know we're gonna need a result property, so result and then column. And what we want to do is to loop over all of these results in here and then map them to the appropriate shape or the appropriate interface that we defined earlier as our user here. So in here, I'm gonna say, all right, I know that I'm gonna get the response because of course that's where all the information is. And I wanna access the result this time. Remember the result is an array. Because it's an array, then we can use the map operator so that we can map over everything. So inside of the map operator, we know we're gonna get a user. So we're gonna say user. We're gonna give it a type of any because we didn't map this. So we're gonna say that's gonna be any, which is gonna be this entire object. But then we want to map it to something else. So what we're gonna say is, we're gonna say, all right, so I'm gonna map this to a new object. So I'm gonna put open and close curly braces. And then I want to map every single user so every single one of these, in this case, that would be two if we set the result to two. So these two guys, oops, these two users, right? I want to map their information. So I'm gonna step inside of these objects and sub objects and all that, and then get the information that I need so that I can map it to this user that I define, which is gonna be this guy, okay? So that's what we're trying to do here. And trust me, you're gonna have to do this many, many different times whenever you're working with building applications and using APIs that you didn't build. So let's go back to the service. And here, remember, we're accessing the results, which is an array. You can see here it's an array. We're mapping. So the JavaScript map that we can use on arrays, and we're mapping everything to a user. Remember, we're gonna put any here because we didn't give this any type yet. Okay, so we're gonna map it to a new object. So everything inside of this array, we're gonna map it to what we want in here. But before I do that, I want to cast this to a user. The way that I can do this, I can put, for example, opening parenthesis and put the user in there. So I'm gonna put diamond, the user type, and then close it and then put the closing parenthesis here. Okay, so we're forcing this to be a user. And here I can just import this interface. So now inside of this guy, I can map all of the user information I know that I'm gonna need to map. So we can just go in here, grab all this information, go back here, paste it, okay? And I make sure this is formatted properly, okay? So now, how are we gonna get the UUID? So we know that we're mapping through every single one of these users in here, which is gonna give us this user object. So we can use this guy, and then we want to access the login, so login.uuid. And if you look here, right, we have these two objects, so these two users, so this guy and this other guy. And if I expand this and I go inside of the login, so you can see here, login UUID, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna say, give me the login, okay, from that user that we're looping through and or the user in the current iteration, and then access the login, which is an object, you can see it's an object, and then we just want the UUID, and I need to put a comma here. So that's gonna give us the UUID, and we're gonna do the same for the name. So if you look here, we can see that the name is right here. So we have this name property as a title, first name, and last name. In our case, we want the first name, so we're gonna go in here, we're gonna say we want to go into the user, so the current user and the current iteration, we want to go to name, which is an object, and then we want to access the first. You can see it right here. Okay, so we're gonna go into the current iteration, so that's the user, starting with this object here, go inside name, which is this object right here, and then grab the first, which is whatever that is, pro cool. Procopio. All right, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing this and let's just copy this and do it for the last name because that's pretty obvious and change this to last. Okay, so that's gonna give us the last name. Oops. And we're gonna do the same for the email. So you can see if we scroll down, it's right here. So inside of the user object itself. So for the email, we can say go to the user and then just get the email. 
Okay, that's gonna give us the email. Username is inside of the login, so we have to go inside of the login and then grab the username. So let's just copy all of this. And for the username, we're gonna paste it and we want to access the username. And for the gender, it's just on the user. So if we scroll down, uh, maybe it's up. You can see it right here. So user, so this user object, so the user itself, and then gender. So we can just say on the user, access the gender. That's gonna give us the gender. And the address, now the address is gonna be a little bit funny because if we scroll down, if we want to put this in a US standard address, which is like the house number, uh, apartment number if there is one, and then the street name, the city, the state, and the zip code, then we're gonna have to manipulate this data and then grab all this information that we need. So for the address, which is gonna be just a string, we're gonna say, all right, let me define a string a literal because we know we're gonna be stepping into different things here. And then I want to say access the user, location and i want the street and i want the number okay so we have to put a dollar sign in front of this so if you look here if we want to get the street number right so if we scroll down actually scrolling up you can see we have to go inside of the location and then we have to go inside of the street and then we get the number so that's going to give us the street number and then we get the street name so we can do the same again so i'm going to copy this whole thing just put a space and then paste it. So that's gonna give us the name. So we're gonna say name. So street number and then name and then city and state. So we're gonna put it here again, another space, paste. And we want to go into the user location. We're not gonna go inside of the street, but we want to get the city. So user location city. And uh, let's just get the country. So I can put a, like a comma here, paste this again. We want to get user location and country, okay? So well, you can put the postcode if you want, but you can see where this is going. And I need to put a comma here. All right, so that's gonna be the address, just a long string in which is grabbing the things that we want. And for the date of birth, we can just go over to user.dob.date, okay? And you can see this right here. So if we go scroll down, uh, you can see the OB right here. We just want this date right here, okay? We can get the age if we want, but we can find the age by using the date. It's whatever you want at this point. And then we can also get the phone number. So user.phone, that's pretty straightforward. And then the image URL. So let's scroll down here. So we have three different images. Um, so we can see user.picture. So that's the name of the main object you can see here. So the picture right here, I just collapse. Uh, let's go down right here. So this picture and then we have large, medium and thumbnail. Uh, let's just get the medium. So we're going to see picture. Oops, going to spell that correctly. And then medium. OK, so this is going to give us this URL right here. And then lastly, the coordinates. Remember, the coordinates is an object. So we're going to say object. And the first thing we want is the latitude. And we can get this by just scrolling up here. Let's see here. So this is inside of the location. And then inside of the location, we have the coordinates. And inside of the coordinates, we have the latitude and longitude. So here we can see go inside of the user, go inside of the location, go inside of the coordinates with an S. And we want to get the latitude. And we can just copy this whole thing thing and put a comma paste it in and it's going to be the longitude so we're going to say longitude and also get the longitude here so i'm going to copy this paste here a space and one last thing i want to do so this is all strings right you can see here this is a strings but we define this as numbers so we can just fix this by putting a plus sign in front of this that's a cool trick that you can do in TypeScript just to make things, uh, change things from being strings to numbers. So now we can use this guy inside of these two functions, okay? So you can go back in here and grab all the information that you need or just review this if you want, but I don't wanna spend too much time on this, but you can see what we're doing. We're just stepping in, grabbing the information and then mapping the user to exactly what we want. Remember, this is looping through the different users. So this is gonna return an array because we're using the map here, the JavaScript array map functions, and it's gonna return another array so this is going to be an array itself because remember the users is defined as an array if we look in the response here you can see it's an array of any which we're transforming into an array of users so now we can use this process response and then pass it in these functions and then just map it in there so let's go ahead and do that I want to clean things up a little before I start writing my code. So I'm going to close this. We don't need it anymore. Um, expand this. Let's bring back the IDE here and expand this guy. So what we're going to do is to pass in this process response to the response that we're going to get in here. 
And to do this, we can use the ArcGIS operator. So in here, we're going to say we want to pipe this because we want to start using operators. And then in there, we want to use the map operator. So the map operator allows you to map things from one ship to another. And we know we're going to get a response. So that's the response that we're going to get from the API. And then from that response, we can just call the uh, process response and then pass it in here and just make sure we close this properly. So add an extra closing parenthesis here and make sure the map is imported. And I have too many of them and import the map. So quick fix. This is supposed to come from ArcGIS and you can see now everything looks good. So once we get the response from this HTTP call, it's going to be piped and then map into this, which is going to process it and then return the user with the shape that we just defined down there. And I'm going to expand the get users as well and just do the same thing. So the get users is just going to return one user, but it should be fine because we're still going to loop through that one user. OK, so just copy the same code and then paste it down here. So this should do the trick for us. So now if we go back to the browser and open the developer tools and go to console, we still get the same response. So let's refresh. OK, but this time well, it's still info and result, but if you look, the info is going to be the same because we're just copying everything exactly the same way that they were. But then the result, if we expand it, we have our 15 users and here, look, we don't have all of this information that we didn't want that we were getting from the API. And if you look at the address, it's just one simple string. Um, we should probably put the zip code in there just to make this more of a complete address, but I can leave that up to you. But you can see now we just have just the information that we wanted to have and we don't have anything else that we don't want. But I'm currently noticing a problem with the longitude here and I see that it's not a number, which means we have a typo here and I can see I miss an N here. So let's go back to the editor and let's change this to longitude uh, copy this and paste it here okay so this is giving us a problem because I think I misspell this word so let's go back to the response and actually we need to go to coordinates yeah I miss an N here so make sure we put that N in here I'm sure you guys caught that when I was typing this the first time so now if we go back to the service and it looks clean go back here refresh just one more time and expand result expand the first one you can see now we get everything working and looking nice expand the coordinates okay so we have the two coordinates and we're going to use this to display the location on the map and everything looks good so it's really up to you what else you want to get from that API. You can get whatever information you want. You can map whatever you want to map, but just know that you can clean your data as much as you can. And you can even make deduction from the data as you get it before you like push it over to some components. Like you can manipulate it, clean it, draw other information from what you're getting from the API and then show it exactly the way that you want to show it to your users. And I can tell you this right now, this is something that's being done a lot when you're doing web development and you're using different APIs. Like there's entire applications, like entire companies that are built using APIs of other companies only. They barely have any data that they're actually hosting. All of their data is coming from another API or some other companies, but you never know that because it doesn't look the same because they manipulate the data as they get it from the API that they're getting it from. So this is something that you're going to be doing a lot when you're building a web application and you need to grab information from different APIs because there's like thousands of APIs out there. And sometimes they're really useful because they actually give you almost exactly the information that you're looking for. And you just have to clean it up a little bit, brush it up a little bit just to make it look exactly the way that you want it to look. So just keep that in mind. Now, the only thing left to do is to just display this information on the UI on a table and then continue with the rest of the functionalities and the application. So what I'm going to be looking at next is to just using Bootstrap because, you know, we don't want to have to spend a lot of time writing all the HTML and CSS. So I'm just going to go ahead and use Bootstrap and use all the Bootstrap classes just to make sure the UI looks decent. And then we're just going to go from there. I'm going to bring back the terminal. OK, so I want to install Bootstrap. So Control C to snap this and I want to do NPM install and we want to say Bootstrap. OK, and press enter. So this just installed Bootstrap on this application and I'm going to do ng serve just to bring the application back up and then go back to the editor. So let's uh, double check to make sure that Bootstrap was installed. So inside of the package.json file, 
if we go inside of the dependencies, you can see we have Bootstrap version 5.13. So that is installed in the application. So the way that we set up uh, Bootstrap, I mean, there are many different ways you can do it. Uh, but one way we can do it is to just import it inside of the angular.json file. So let's go inside of this angular.json file. And we're looking for this styles array. OK, so we can just point to the styles from Bootstrap inside of this array. So in here, what I'm going to do is to just add another entry here and just say node underscore modules. And we want to go to bootstrap and we want to go to distribution. We want to go to the CSS folder and then we want to get to the bootstrap that mean that CSS. OK, so that's the minify version. And I'm going to copy this whole thing, paste it in here and we need to pass in the script. So let's do the distribution JS bootstrap mean that JS. OK, so now we have bootstrap imported. We have the CSS styling in the bootstrap JavaScript and make sure that this is imported before any other styles that you have. For example, you can see that they're also importing the styles that CSS, which is going to be like your custom styles or other styles that you're importing. So since bootstrap is like a general style, you want to put it on top so that if you have any other styles, you're overriding stuff, then it takes effect because if this is before bootstrap will override whatever you put after after that. So you want to make sure that bootstrap is first. And then if you make some changes, you put some more code, some CSS styling inside of the style that CSS, then they're going to override whatever a bootstrap already set. So make sure you put that first and then your custom style after it. And once you make changes to the angular.json, I think you have to restart the application. So let's stop this for now, just to be safe. I'm not sure if this has been changed recently, but I remember before, if you make changes to the angular.json, then you have to restart the application. You won't see the changes. So at this point, we should have bootstrap install and we have it configured so we can use these bootstrap styles in our application. So I'm going to close this and let's go to the main file. So the app component here. Well, that's not the main file, but the main UI file. And then in here, I want to put this inside of a div. So I want a div oops with a class of container and uh, let's also give it a margin a top of maybe four and a margin bottom to maybe also four okay and inside of this div we're gonna have another div so we're gonna say div give it a class of row and we're gonna have inside of this div we're gonna have the col.xs. Uh, not that dash x thrash small not 12 okay and then in here we can put a h2 so i'm gonna say h2 um and then say user catalog and after that i can put a line break so under there i'm gonna say hr and after that i want to put the router outlet so let's just cut this from here just paste it in here OK, so that should give us the container from Bootstrap. I do want this to be aligned. OK, so that looks good. So if we go back now, um, you can see that looks a lot better. So we have user catalog. You can see the Bootstrap is already applied. The container, uh, close this. You can see the container in action. So this doesn't stretch all the way to the end of the window. And then we have all the content in there. So Bootstrap is configured. The next thing we're going to do is to just define a table here. Well, the first thing is we have to define a card so that we can show the information of the API. So this information that we grab the info here. So this information, and then we're going to loop through, show these users on a table here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close this because we don't need it. So let's go back to the editor and let's see here. So we have this in place, so we don't need to do anything else here. Uh, actually, we can set this as a title. So let's do string interpolation. We're going to say title and close this. And we can go inside of there and go into the component title user catalog. Okay. All right, so that title should be here. Uh, we didn't make any changes here. Just put it in there instead of hard coding it inside of the template itself. 
let's close this and we want to go inside of the component folder so this component we want to go inside of the users and then here uh, let's define a placeholder for the users so here we're gonna say uh, response we give it a type of response okay so that's coming from our interface there's a response already here so make sure you get the response from your interface here and right away we can see that we're getting an error so let me collapse this so you see that we're getting an error because we didn't initialize this okay so this is something that you're gonna see very very often when you don't initialize your uh, variable or your properties inside of your class so one way we can fix this easy um, which I prefer by the way is to just set this to uh, not give me this problem so below strict here I'm gonna go down there and then define the strict uh, I think it's called property uh, initialization and we're just gonna set this to false okay we don't want this to be strict uh, this is supposed to be strict property initialization set this to false once we do this then this is gonna go away okay sometimes I just want to define things and not set them to any default value because if I were to do this then I'm gonna set this to null or undefined and I don't want to do that so then um, what we want to do is to just set this response to whatever result we're gonna get here so we're gonna log it and then we're gonna say this that response set it equal to the result that we get from the api now we have a way and the template to access this information that's coming for us because we set it down there to this response right here so now let's go inside of the ui and close this I'm gonna get rid of this and we need a div and we're gonna give it a class of card because we have bootstrap so we can use these classes but before we're gonna use the built-in directive of ngf because we don't want this to try to load if there is no uh, response defined so we're going to set this equal to the response okay so if there is a response then this div is going to display inside of there we need another div and we're going to give it a class of card uh, body because that's what we want and inside of there uh, let's define an h5 and we're going to say random user API okay so that's just the title of the API and let's just do a paragraph so we're gonna do a paragraph uh, give it a class of card text so those are just bootstrap classes you guys probably know that already and we're gonna do the SID and we want this to be from the string interpolation so we're gonna say response that info that seed okay so you can see this is oops seed okay this should exist because we know that we define it in our response and i'm just gonna copy this and duplicate it a few times and we want the uh, results so that's going to be the results and then we want the version version okay so once we do this also have to change it here so results uppercase and version all right save and go back all right so this is the information so the random user api the seed is coming from the result we have 15 and the version is 1.3 so let's go ahead and define a table if i can bring this back so this is that and let's put another brick line here so i'm gonna go down there and put a brick line so i'm gonna say br just so we can have some space and then i'm gonna define a table so we're gonna say table uh give it a class of table and another class of table let's say right I think yep okay so again we're gonna check to make sure we have a response there's better ways to do this if you check some of the other courses that i have you'll see a way that i show how to like use state instead of doing this we're gonna just use the state of the application to determine you know what state we're in and then show the specific ui for that state but in this case i'm just taking a quick shortcut here and this is also a good way to check for the state of your uh, component uh, properties so that's not like oh this is bad this is acceptable okay so then in here what i want to do is to have the table head so i'm gonna say tb head and give it a class of table uh, dash light okay so these are all bootstrap classes i'm sure you guys are familiar with those and not tb this is supposed to be t head so table head okay and then here we're gonna define what we want so tr and uh, th we want to give this a scope um, so let's do scope and make sure this is column okay and we want to define this in all of them so we're going to have the id of the user 
and then we're gonna have the image and then the name the email the address the phone and maybe like some action we're not gonna display everything here we're just gonna display some of the information and then we're gonna display the rest when they click on the user we're gonna show the rest of the information of the user so here we're gonna show just like this information email let's do address and let's do the phone and action okay so this is where we're going to have the button to say do you want to view the user or delete the user in our case we just have the view user so we're going to use that so our ui is coming together again those are all bootstrap classes so if you guys are familiar with bootstrap then you can just go ahead and google it's pretty simple you can see now we have something that's looking a little bit more decent so now we just have to work on the table body so let's go ahead and work on that i'm going to bring back the application and underneath the table head we want to define the table body so i'm going to do t body press enter and inside of there i want to define the table row so tr and this is where we're going to loop through everything so let's go in there and we're going to use another directive so that's the ng4 and we're going to set this equal to our loop so in there we want to loop into everything inside of the result so we're going to say let user of response oops response that results and we can take a look at the index as well if we want. So we can see let i equal index, and that's how you do that. Just to be safe here again, we can put the safe navigator here. So you put a question mark. So you won't try to define the users, the, the results in this case, unless this is defined. That's another way to do like ng if this exists or something like that, but in a navigational way. So you won't try to look into the result unless the response is defined. And then inside of there, I want to define all the table data. So I'm going to do td. And in here, we want to do string interpolation. So we're gonna say, uh, give us the user UUID and close this guy. And then just repeat this as many times that we want. So two, three, uh, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven so we have the id and then we have the image so to get the image inside of the td we're going to define an image img actually and the source is going to be the user that image url because that's what we define and we're just going to put this inside of the brackets because we want to do property binding so this here is string interpolation and this here is property binding. You use the property that already exists in HTML, so the source, and then we put it into bracket. That's property binding. And for the alternative, if there's no image, we can pass in the user that, let's say, first name. Okay. And let's see here. Um, the next thing is the name of the user. So for this, we're going to do string interpolation. So after the image, we're going to do first name and do the last name. So copy this space paste and then ellie so last name and then we have the after the last name the email so we're going to say email and then the address so address and then phone so we're going to say phone the last one remember it's the call to action from our table uh, head so we can't put the user information here we have to put something else so user id user image first name and last name for the name that we're defining here and then we have the email the address the phone and then down there we're going to define uh, a button so let's remove this and then in there we're going to say we want a button oops we want a class of button and let's do btn and then btn dash primary okay that's just gonna be like the blue button and then in here we can say view so to view the user and here we're gonna use the router link so we're gonna say router link and we want this to go to let's put some bracket in here so we want this to go to slash user so we're gonna say slash user so that's gonna pass in the slash user for the route and then we pass in the user id we can say user that uuid okay so that way we pass in slash user slash whatever the id of the user is and then maybe give this a type of button because it's a button all right so this should be every Everything we need if we don't have any errors or any typos or anything everything should look good so let's go back here and take a look all right so you can see that looks pretty decent i think the ids are taking too much space like we don't want to see this entire id and probably make the images a little bit uh, more round with the border radius so let's go ahead and fix that right now 
let's go back to the application. The first thing is we want to give the image some height and some width so that they're not so big. So we're going to say height and do 45 and width we're going to do 45 as well. We can put an inline style here. So I'm going to say style and then let's do border radius and let's do 50% so that they can be round. All right, let's go back. That looks better. I mean, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. This is very bootstrap looking, very bootstrappy. And let's see if we can. Um, so this is too long, right? So if we go back here, check this out, you can see that this is like kind of long. Let's just show part of the string here. So let's go back to the app. And and here, when you're doing string repilation, you can use JavaScript um, code in there as well. So for example, I can do dot and then call substring, which is from JavaScript. So str. And we need to pass it. In this case, we're going to pass in two values. So we're going to start at the beginning. So index zero, say we want to take the first six character. So from zero, zero index to the sixth index. If we go back now, it looks a little bit smaller and everything sits right where I want them to sit. So if I click on the view, it should navigate to the user uh, detail page, but we're not going to see anything because we haven't worked on this page yet. So if I click on it, you can see it navigates to the user detail works, but there's nothing to show yet. So that looks pretty good for now. And we're fetching the data and showing the data the way that we want to show it. The next thing we have to do is to just work on the detail page. So that looks pretty decent. Again, up to you, however you want to change it. It's really up to you at this point. But at least now we know that our application is coming together. The way that we're going to get this ID of the user in the URL is by using a route parameter. So when you click on the button, it navigates to user. And then we have the user ID here that we also define in the routes, right? And what we have to do is to just see if we can grab this information using the activated route in Angular. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to open the application back up and going to close this for now. And inside of the user detail, which is the component that's being loaded, we need to inject the activated route. So first let's do that. So activated route and give it a type of activated route. Okay. So that's this run right here. And we also need the service. So we're going to say private user service, give it a type of user service. So we have the service where we're going to use the second function. So this function, I'm going to collapse this, this function so that we can, you know, grab that one user. And then we want to use the activated route so that we can get the ID of the user. So the way this is going to work again, inside of the ng on init, which is going to be called whenever this component is initialized. So we're going to do this, that activated route. So we're going to access that route access the params map like there's a map that contains all of the different parameters and we want to subscribe to that and this is going to give us a param so we're going to call this params and give it a type of params map okay and then we can execute the code that we want so whenever there is a page that is loaded or this specific page is loaded with the different parameters that we want then we can react to it so that's what the uh, subscription is for so in this case we're going to say this user service that get user and here we're going to pass in that specific id we know we only get one so from the params we're going to call the get and then pass in a string. In this case, we're looking for the UUID. That's the same string that we define. And we're going to subscribe again, because remember, this is also returning a subscription. We're going to subscribe into that. And then we're going to console log it for now. So console that log. And let's just say, um, well, we have to get the response first. So we're going to get a response. Uh, type any when we get the response then we're gonna say execute this code right here so console that log and then the response and here we're getting an error because this is supposed to be a number so we're gonna just put a plus sign in front of this here it's saying this can be null because remember we're trying to access this string in here so there's no certainty that this will exist it can be null so to force this we can put this um, exclamation point here that's a trick that you can do just to fix this problem so if we load the page and go to the console we should be able to pass in that uid that we're gonna get because this param is gonna contain all of the 
different parameters by name. And if we go back to the routing and here, remember we said this UUID. So after user slash whatever comes is going to be inside of this ID here. So once we get this ID, it's going to give us the value and the route itself. So if we want to see this also, we can um, log that as well. So if you guys just want to see this, we can go here and do console.log and then pass it in here. Whoops, what am I doing? Uh, press the wrong button, console.log and then paste it in here. Okay, so this is gonna show us the ID. Uh, we can pass in a string here just to make sure we can see it. User ID. Okay, so that's gonna give us the ID and then we pass that ID to get user. Again, get user is returning an observable, subscribe to it. Once we get the response, we log it in the console. So go back and open the developer tool, go into the console, clear this and view. Okay, so we get not a number and that's because this is actually not a number, it's a UUID and we're trying to convert it to a number. So let's go back and fix that real quick. So this is taking a number, the UUID is not a number, it's actually a string. So we can just change this to string and remove the default value. Okay, so now if we go back, remove that plus sign, Okay, that should fix the problem. And you can see the user IDs here. So that's the same ID that we're seeing here. If we go back, refresh, click on view, you see the ID here is the same that we have in the URL and we get the information and get that one user right here. Okay, so that's that one user that we fetch and then we're logging the response in there. So we get the same information for the info, for the result, it's an array containing just one user. So now all we have to do is to use that information, show the user information here, and then use the coordinates to show the location on the map. So let's go ahead and work on these. So I went ahead and added the UI for the detail page. So you can see here, I'm using this random user image here, but that's why we're gonna display all of the information. So the name, username, ID, and the rest of the information here, and then the map as well. So we don't have anything here yet. There's no functionality added yet. Since this is bootstrap, so I don't wanna be like spending a lot of time writing like typical bootstrap code in the HTML and CSS. So I just put it in, and then we're gonna go ahead and focus on what's really more important, which is the functionality. And again, all of the code is provided. So if you want to check it out for yourself, you can just download the code and then look at it for yourself. But this is what it looks like. So just typical bootstrap stuff. And in here, I haven't done anything. So the same code that we had from the beginning and then in the UI, I just added this random image you can see here and then I have everything blank. So let's go back to the user detail. So now that we have the response, so we can set a response in here and then we can use it just so that we can um, display the user information. So let's go back to the users and let's just copy this response. We know that it's gonna be the same because it's returning the same type of response from the service. If you remember, you can see here, it's the same response. It's returning this response right here and we define this function to process the response. So close that, uh, close some of these. And um, so yeah, so here we're gonna come inside of this class and define this response. And then we're gonna set this response, the response that we get to the API. So equal to response, oops. Okay, so now we have access to this in the template and we can use it in the template just to show the information that we wanna show. So let's copy this response, go back to the detail. And then in here, um, we can access the information from the response. So let's do, uh, pass in the user image here. So we can do something like the response that we know that we're gonna get, actually I have it copied, and we want to access the results and we want to access the first element because we know it's gonna be an array and that's gonna have just one element. And then we want the image URL. And I see that I'm getting an error, so it's not finding the result on this response. So uh, let's make sure we import this. Remember, I told you guys there's already another response. So if you don't import it, then it's gonna use the default one. And that was probably like a bad name for this. So make sure you call this like custom response or something like that. And uh, let's go to the details and let's just import it underneath here. So this is the response that we're talking about. So that specific response from the interface, you can see now it's gone. And if we go back, you can see now we get a different uh, picture. So click here again, 
a different picture. So we getting the picture of the user. Also another thing, even though we're going to pass in the user ID, random API is going to give us just some random user. It's not going to give us the user by that specific ID, which I'm guessing they're generating the IDs on the fly. So the IDs are not really attached to a particular user, but that doesn't change anything to what we're doing. So if I click on view here, you can see the ID is here, but then we get the different user from the user we clicked on. So if we click on Xenon Dacosta, you can see this guy right here, click on it, then we get this other guy. So it's not the same, but again, it's still working and we can check the console as well. Uh, we got some errors before, refresh. Okay, I'm gonna talk about these errors in a minute, but I just want you to see, um, we get the result here. You can see it's an array and then we have there's just that one guy in here. Okay, so that's the one guy. So this is working and let's just fill in the rest of the information and then we're gonna talk about why we're getting this error and I'm gonna show you the other way that you can fix it. So let's go back to the app and uh, we pass in the user here and we need the username so we can copy this and then pass in the username here. So username and we need the ID. So that's gonna be the UUID and the, the first name here. So for this, we're gonna do string interpolation. So response, uh, okay, just paste it here. And we want the first name. So we're gonna say first name and we want to do the same for the last name. So copy this space and then last name. Actually, I think this is wrong because this is the form. So this is supposed to be the title. So that's the name of the guy that's supposed to be first name. So let's just cut this out and then go back. Okay, so this is gonna stay first name. We just have to put it inside of the value here so that we can show it in the form in here. So let's go back and in here, we're gonna do property binding again. So putting the brackets around it. And then here we can pass in this information. Oops, the name goes in here. So we can paste this here. So for this name, we're gonna pass in the first name and the last name. And for this, uh, we're not gonna do this. Since we're using property binding, so we don't need the curly braces, you only use the curly braces for string interpolations. We can copy this and then paste it here for the value and do the same for the last name. Copy, last name for the value, paste. This is the date of birth. So we're gonna change this to date of birth. And this is for the email, change this to email. And this is for the phone, change this to phone. And this is the gender, gender, and the address. And all right. And then we need to put the brackets around this because we're doing um, property binding. So I'm gonna select all of them. Oops, I didn't want to go back up. So control D. Okay, that's the last one from the beginning. Put a bracket, go to the end, put a bracket. Okay, and go back and click on view. Okay, so we have the information being displayed here and the name, the username is incorrect. The ID is also incorrect. So let's go ahead and fix these. Let's go back and go up. All right, so this is supposed to be in string interpolation. Oops. So we want to do that. Make sure put the proper spacing and string interpolation here. Proper spacing. Go back. All right, so that looks good. So if we go back, click on the user, here's the user information. Everything looks nice. The other thing I want to do is to put a functionality on this so that when you come into the page, everything is disabled. And then once you click edit user, then everything is enabled and then you can make changes and then save. Now we're not going to send this request to the backend to save the user because obviously we don't know how to save a user. And I don't think this API allows us to save user, but just so you can have a feel of what that looks like, um, because you're probably going to need to do that. So let's go ahead and work on that. So I'm gonna bring back the editor. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to 
have this disabled whenever we first enter the page. Once they click the edit button, I'm going to change this to edit, then everything is going to be disabled. Once they click on save changes, we're going to save the information, send the request back so that the request can be saved. The only part that we're not going to be doing is the actual saving. This API only allows you to read the data, but not save or anything like that, at least from what I read. But we're not going to do the saving part. But you will have a good understanding of how you might want to do that. The only thing that we're not going to be doing is just setting the request. So let's go back to the user detail, right? So that's where we are. So I'm going to go ahead and define a mode. So I'm going to go down here and say mode. I'm going to give it a literal type. So I'm going to say edit as one option and the other option by using a pipe. So that's an or operator and that can be locked. OK, so by default, it's going to be locked. So I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to locked. OK. So this is the mode. So we have two modes. It can either be an edit mode or it can be in lock mode. And we also have to make the button dynamic. So the save button, we have to make it dynamic. So instead of hard coding it at the forum, like down there, so the save here, we're going to make it dynamic. So in here, we can say something like uh, button text, okay, which we're going to set equal to, well, have to make it a string first just to enforce the type. If I set it just directly like this, for example, I say this is going to be some string, then TypeScript is going to infer that it is a string. But you can also enforce it just to make sure that only string can be set here. And that's what I want to do. So here I'm going to say by default, it's going to be edit. So edit is going to be what the button is going to say by default. So now I can go in here, go back here, and then do string interpolation and then paste the button text here. So now if we go back, can see it says edit but everything is still disabled so we don't want that when the user first comes into the page like this they should see that this is disabled once they click the button then it should be enabled so let's see if we can uh, fix that real quick right back here and uh, let's go down and define a function so down there i'm going to define a function and i'm just going to call it change mode okay so you can name this whatever you want and it takes the mode and uh, it can also be edit or locked because we want to. we can define this as a type but i'm just doing this real quick on the fly but you should probably define this as a type so the mode here can be either edit or lock so the same thing that we define up there and i'm going to make this optional and you're going to see why in a minute and it's not going to return anything so we're going to pass in void here and then oops what we want to do, uh, let's see if we can console log that mode just so we can know what it is. And then we want to set the mode. So once they click the button, so when they click on edit, this function is going to fire and we're going to access the mode and we want to set it to this, that mode equal. We're going to check to see if it's locked. Okay. So if it's locked, put a question mark, then we're going to set it to edit. So here we're going to say edit. You can see that. We only have these two options because I defined this as a literal type. So we can only pass edit and lock. So even though we're not defining a type, that's another way to enforce the values that this can have. So if the mode, when they click the button, if the mode is locked, then we're going to set it to edit. Otherwise, we're going to set it to locked because we know that's the only other state that this can be in. So when they click the button, we want to set the mode. By default, the mode is going to be locked, which is when they first come into the page. They click the button. If it was locked, we're going to set it to edit. Otherwise, which means if it was edit, then we're going to set it to lock. And we're going to do something similar with the button text. So we're going to say this, that button, and we're going to try to set it to this, that button text. If it equals to edit, and we're going to check if it's edit, then we're going to say um, something like save changes. Otherwise, we're going to set it to edit because then it wasn't save changes. So edit. Okay. And then close. We can also make this a literal type. Um, so let's just copy this just to enforce this. So instead of defining it as a string, we're going to paste this here, put a pipe here. So we're saying this can either be save changes or edit by default It's going to be edit. So we're checking for edit here. If it's edit, we change it. Otherwise, we keep edit. Now, um, we can do if um, mode equal, and we can check to see if it's edit, because then they changed the mode to edit. That means they're trying to save. 
So we can come in here and uh, let's say console.log and updating user on the back end, for example. Okay, so this is where we will put logic to, um, so we can say something like logic to update the user on the back end. Okay. All right. So that's where your logic would go. And you're gonna see that in just uh, a minute once I start incorporating this in the UI. So now we can copy this and go back to the UI. And we want to go to that button. So this is the button. This is the click event. So this is event binding and we want to bind to the click event. So we're gonna say click and we're gonna pass in this and we want to pass in the mode. Remember the mode is defined in the application and well, not in the application, but in the TS file. We're referring to this mode here. So whatever the mode is, that's what this is gonna be. And we know when we click it, we're gonna go ahead and change it down there. So let's give this a try. So let's go back and refresh view. So we can see now it's edit. If I click it, it should be save changes. You can see now it's save changes. Now, the only thing that we have left to do is to disable this unless we in edit mode, which is gonna be pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna bring back the editor. So what we're gonna do is to just disable all the input here. And this is gonna be pretty easy to do. So we can come here and let's just do, actually, I'm gonna select all of them. So let's highlight this and do Control D, Control D, Control D. Uh, down, okay. So what we want to do is to go to the beginning and, uh, well, actually we have to go to the end, put a space. We want to do bracket disabled. So we're accessing the disable property. And then in here, we're just gonna set it equal to say, if the mode, so the mode in the TS file equal locked. Okay, so if the mode is locked, then all of this is gonna be locked as well. So all the inputs are gonna be locked or they're gonna be disabled. And let's make sure we didn't miss any input. All right, so that looks good. So now if we go back and refresh, click here, you can see now it's disabled. Everything is disabled and we have the edit button. I click on edit, everything is enabled and I can actually save the changes now. And we can also check the console just to make sure our logic is working. You can debug it as well, but just gonna show the console here. So let's go back, clear. We're gonna get an error and I'm gonna get back to this in a second. So click view, you see the error here, so we can ignore it for now. And you can see that we have the information that we were supposed to get, but then when we click on edit, the mode was locked, it got changed. And then we click it again, the mode was edit and it's got changed and that's when we're updating the user. So when we click edit the first time, we're not gonna update the user in the backend if we were gonna do that like send a request or something. So click it again, but we didn't make any call to the backend or update the user. But when we click save changes, that's when we update the user. So that looks like it's working fine and that's just you know a workaround for this. You could probably think of another better way to implement this, but that should do for now. Now, the other thing that we've been seeing, which is the error here. So every time you come to this page, I clear this. Every time you come here, we get this error. Can't read property of undefined and it's trying to read the result. And it shows you where this is coming from. You can see it's coming from the user detail component on line eight, column 12. So if we click here, what it's trying to do is it's trying to access this result. And this result doesn't exist yet because by default, the response that would define is undefined. So if we go back here for one second, go back here. So this is undefined, right? It's not set to anything. But then when this UI component is loaded, it's trying to access this result and this result doesn't exist. One way to solve this is to put the safe navigator, like the question mark that you would put here. But another better way that we can resolve this is by using a resolver. If we go back to the outline and scroll down a little, remember we're also covering resolver. So if we scroll up, um, we've pretty much covered everything that we have on here, not in depth, but I give you an example of everything that we, we talked about here in the outline. And we use the directives, so ng4, ng if, those are structural built-in directives. There are more, but we'll talk more about them in another course. And um, we know we covered routing, but now we're talking about the resolver. So the resolver is not gonna navigate to the route until after the data is ready, which is why we're getting this behavior here, because we tried to load this UI but then there's no data yet because we're making an HTTP request. 
So then we get this undefined property and the code is trying to read the result on the property, which is the response that we have here. So then it doesn't exist, so it's undefined. And then it gives us this error right here. Whenever you have a resolver on your route, until the resolver is resolved, then Angular will not route the app to the page. So that way that we can always be sure that before we navigate to this route and show this component and this UI, there's always gonna be data and then we'll never have to deal with this problem anymore. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be creating a resolver and I'm gonna show you a different way that we can fetch this data and we're not gonna navigate to this page until the data comes back. And then when we navigate, then we'll stop seeing this error because then the data will be there, then it won't be undefined. So that's what we're gonna be working on next. So I opened the Angular CLI and I searched for the ng-generate resolver because I want you to get used to using the Angular CLI to generate components and resolvers and services. It's just really just very convenient instead of you trying to create all these files. So we're gonna try to create a resolver so we can do ng-generate resolver. So I'm gonna copy this and then bring back the terminal. All right, stop the application, clear the screen, paste this in. So ng-generate resolver. Another thing I want to point out is resolvers are really just services. So I'm going to put them inside of the service folder and I'm going to call it user. So that's the user resolver and its goal or its purpose is going to be to resolve the user before we navigate to the page. And I think I can do skip test and press enter. Let's see what happens. All right. So we get that one file, which is the user.resolver.ts. Run the application again. And let's go back here and we're going to bring back the editor. All right. So let's go back here and we want to go to let's collapse some of these things. So inside of the service, now we have the user resolver.ts and we're just going to implement this one resolve, which is going to resolve to some value that we're going to talk about in a minute. In this case, they are putting a Boolean by default, but that's not what we want. And then we're just going to edit to our route. Now, the reason I say that this is a service is because of this decorator right here. So you can see they have the same injectable that's being provided in root. So that tells you that this is some kind of service. And then here we have to just export the class that's going to implement the resolve with the data type that you want to resolve to. And then you just have to um, implement this resolve that's going to return the data that you want. So now the first thing we're going to have to do is to change the data type that this is supposed to resolve. That's going to be in our case, the response, because we know that when we send the HTTP requests, then we're expecting a response and make sure you pick it from your interface here. So that's our response. And we're going to do the same thing here so that it doesn't complain. So we're returning the response. Now, what we can do is to pass in the service and call the get user function so that we can fetch that user. So in here, we're going to define a constructor inside of the constructor. We're going to pass in the user service. So we're going to say user service, which is going to be a type user service. All right. And once we have the user service injected, we can just call it. So we're going to say this, that user service, that get user. And then again, we have the activated rod snapshot here. So this is the same thing, but just a snapshot, but it contains the same information. So we can do the same thing again. So we can say route dot params map, and then we want to get the ID. So here we're going to say we're looking for the UUID. It's going to complain. This might not exist. So we're going to put this exclamation point here. Again, this is going to be a string. So we don't have to do anything else here because this method now is expecting a string. And we're not using the state. And that's why this is grayed out. A cool thing we can do is to just put an underscore here. And that's just going to take care of the problem. We're telling the compiler that we're aware that this parameter is going to be there. We're just not using it by just passing in this underscore. And and we can do some cleanup here. So probably remove this router. Uh, I'm going to put this on one line. That's just my preference. You can leave things on different lines if you want to and remove this extra import clean up a little. All right. So that looks good. So all we're doing with the resolver, we're just saying we want to resolve this data. Okay. So this is the data that we're trying to resolve. And that's all we have to do here. Now we're going to tell Angular on which route to use this resolver because we need to tell it, Hey, do not navigate to that route unless this is resolved because we need this data before we try to load the UI, which is why we are getting the problem with the result being undefined. So we're done with the resolver. I can just close it and go Go back to the router uh, or the route module and then in here on this user with the user id we're going to define the resolver so here if i put resolve 
and then we're going to put the name of the resolver. Now the resolver is an object. So we're going to do open and close curly braces. Now we have to give it a name. So in this case, I'm going to call it resolve response and give it the resolver class name. So user resolver. Okay. So this name we had to come up with, this is a property that we're defining on this object. So resolve is part of the API for the routes, as you can see here, and then it takes an object with a key and the class or the resolver class. So we're calling the user resolver. We give it a key of resolve response, which is going to be our response. Uh, that's going to happen in here. Okay. So I hope that this is all connecting. So now this route, whenever we call it, Angular is not going to try to navigate to this route unless this is resolved, which is going to be fetching the data to get this user. Okay. So unless this is resolved, it's not going to try to navigate. And this is going to solve our problem. Like I explained before of this being undefined. So let's go ahead and see how we can hook this up now in this component so that we can grab this data from the resolver. So let's bring back Visual Studio Code. We're done in the app routing module, so we don't have to do anything here. Close that. And we have to go here now. So when we get to this initialization, so whenever we're going to run this code to see if we can fetch the user, we're not going to be doing this anymore. So we're going to comment this out. Okay. Oops. I miss this closing. Comment it out. Okay. So you can still have the code and you can check it out because you can also use this. But for now, we're going to use the resolver. What we're going to do, um, let's define a user. So let's go up here. We're going to say user, give it a type of user. Okay, so that's the user that we define um, from our interface. Okay, so that's the user here. So now we know that we're going to get the response, like the entire response. What we can do is we can see this that user. Okay, we're going to set it equal to this that activated route and we want to get the snapshot and we want to access the data inside of the data we're going to access the name that we set in the router so here we need to grab this name okay so the resolve response is what we're uh, looking for here so let's uh, collapse this and we're going to pass this in here and we know that this entire thing is going to be the response right so on that response since this data is of type data but that's not what we want we know that this is supposed to give us a user or the response but in this case we're going to pass the user instead so what we can do is to do dot result okay because we know that's going to exist and then we need to get the first element okay so this is going to give us just the user okay and just to enforce the typing on this we can just cast this so we're gonna select everything open and in here we're gonna say open again pass in the type of user close so we're casting this into a user because we know that's what it's going to be so that we don't have to you know, deal with this array here because we don't care about this array. And another thing is we're not showing the, if we go back, this is broken. We're going to fix it in a minute. We're not showing this information. So we don't really care for that info uh, that you see here that we're showing here. We're only showing this on the main page. Once you go to the user details, then we don't show that info. So we don't care about it. So let's go back and fix this page right now. So, um, close so now we only have this user that we can work with we don't need this response anymore so let's get rid of that scroll up get rid of this import as well for it okay so now uh we also don't need this map well i'm gonna put this back because this is for the committed code so you guys should uh, make sure you clean that up and we can also log this user just so that we can see what it looks like so log uh, this that user okay so we can see that user and yeah, that's pretty much everything we have to do. So now we have to change this response that we were using in the UI and pass in that user instead. So instead of doing all this stuff that we're doing here, I'm going to select all of them, all of them and pass in the user. Okay. So that's going to be the user first name, last name, UID, etc. So now if we go back and refresh, we can view. Everything seems to be working and you can see the user is being displayed here. So if we expand this, this is the user. And another thing is if I go back again, look what happens. I click it. This is so fast that you didn't see the delay. But if there was a delay in fetching the user like that one user, you would see that you would still be on this page. It wouldn't navigate to the user detail page 
until after it fetches the user. So if I click on this, it's so fast that you didn't see it, but that's what would happen. Now, another thing we would do is, well, you probably would do this in a real world application anyway, is whenever you click on a button, there is something being fetched in the back end, then you would show like a spinner or give some indication to the user that there's some something happening and they just have to wait for for a little while. And as you can see now, we don't have the error anymore that things are undefined. If I click it, you can see we have the data, everything looks clean. There's no errors, nothing is undefined because the router doesn't navigate to this page until after this user is resolved, which is why they call it a resolver. So click it again, you can see everything is smooth. There's no errors, no nothing. So at this point, um, all the major functionalities are working. So we have our list here, um, the random user API information up there, and then we can click on the user, we can see the information, we can edit the information, save and everything. So what is left to do at this point is to just show the map with the marker so that we can show the location of the user. Okay, so that's going to be like a pretty cool application once we're done building all the features. So let's go ahead and work on this map and show the user location wherever that user uh, appears to be. The library that I'm going to use or the map API that I'm going to use is called leaflet. And I really like it a lot because it's really simple to use and they're using like HTML and CSS to make it look pretty. And I really like to uh, use it when I have something quick that I just want to show on the map. Now that's not to say that leaflet is not a complicated API. You can actually build really complex uh, map application with it. So definitely check it out. This is not the first time that I'm using it. I've used it before and I really like using it in my applications. So you can go ahead and check it out. You can go to the docs and then see how how to use it. You can use it with plain old JavaScript and almost all the frameworks uh, or UI frameworks that I know. You, you should be able to integrate it with Leaflet. So definitely check them out. And that's what we're going to be using for this application. So I'm going to bring back the terminal again and I'm going to stop this and clear the screen. The first thing I want to do is to install uh, Leaflet. So I'm going to do npm install and I'm going to say Leaflet. Okay, so that's going to install it. Press enter. The second thing is I want to install the type. So let's do at types forward slash and leaflet. And we want this as a dev dependency. So I'm going to put dash D and then press enter. Now we can do and just serve again just to run the application again. And I'm going to close this because we don't need it anymore. Let's go back to the application and uh, let's go here. All we have to do, we can define another function. We can do it in the ng on init, but we don't want to make this ng on init too big with a lot of logic. So I'm going to go down there and I'm going to define another function. Before I do that, let me make sure I got all my packages installed. So we have leaflet here and we have the types at the dev dependency. Okay, so that looks good. So now uh, let's define a function that's going to just do all the map things that we wanted to do. I'm going to call this, let's do private to load map. Okay, so this is going to just load the map. It's going to take just the coordinate. So we're going to give this a type of coordinates that's supposed to come from our interface and return type is void. So if we remember inside of this coordinates, we have the latitude and longitude. So that's all we should need to generate the map. We just need the location and then just put the marker in that specific location. So we're going to pass in the coordinates and we know that we're going to get these coordinates. If we look at the user information in the console, once we get that user, we have this coordinates object with exactly what we want. And we set it up like this intentionally because we know that we're going to need this information. All right, so let's go back to the code. Using leaflet, uh, we have to import it actually. So let me scroll up a little bit. I'm going to import it after the params map import. And I'm going to do, um, let's do import star. So we're going to import everything as leaflet. So we're going to say leaf let and that's supposed to come from leaflet okay so you probably should drill into this library and just import exactly what you're gonna need you probably don't want to import everything as leaflet but for now that should do because we're not building an app like that's gonna be deployed but if you intend to do that, if you intend to use this in a real world application where you're going to deploy the app, every little way that you can gain on performance matters. So you probably would have to look and import only the things that you're going to need for this class and not import.
export everything uh, as you see that I'm doing here. And you probably would be able to do the structuring. So you would be able to grab exactly what you want from this entire library. I don't know how big this library is, but usually they're not small. The best practice is you only import exactly what you need and everything you don't need, you just don't import. All right, so let's go down here. Inside of the function that's gonna load the map, I'm just gonna go ahead and define a constant that I'm gonna call map and set it equal to leaflet that and we're going to call the map and here we need to pass it an id like the html where it's supposed to put the map and i call this map and i'll show you that right now so if we go back here after the forum you can see this id of map okay so this is really important otherwise you will not see your map so i'm going to display the map inside of this div and i give it an id of map which is what I'm doing here. Okay, so leaflet is gonna grab that specific element on the UI. So you have to make sure that you have this, okay? So after that, it takes a bunch of parameter that comes in the form of an object. So I'm gonna do comma and then open and close object. Inside of that object is where we're gonna put the center location. So we're gonna say center and that's where we're gonna pass in the coordinate. So we're gonna say coordinate that latitude and then coordinate that longitude, okay? So this is gonna center the map at this specific coordinates. And then we can uh, give it a zoom. So let's do zoom. I'm gonna set eight. You can pass in a lot more parameter into this object, but I'll leave this up to you. The second thing that we need after we have the map is we need the actual map. In this case, they call it a tile, like the actual picture where we're gonna put this position with that zoom level, okay? So what we want to do is to go down and define another constant this time i'm going to call it main layer or you can call it layer you can call it tile it can be called whatever you want and then we're going to call leaflet that tile layer okay so the tile layer again is going to be an object it's going to take the url of the tile so that's going to be tile url so i'm going to talk about this in a second and then it's going to take an object with a bunch of properties which is something you probably would expect would happen so in here we're going to pass in tile size and i'm going to set this to 512 and a zoom offset i'm going to set this to minus one and i'm going to set the min zoom so the minimum zoom uh, let's do 30. I just played with these numbers until it's at some point that I like. Max zoom, I'm gonna set this to 30, set this to one. We don't want this to be too big. And then we can set cross origin to true and we need attribution. Now this is really important. The attribution is the location where you're gonna get the tile or the map. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this information in here because that's uh, gonna take too much time for me to type it all out. But this is really important. Wherever you're gonna get a tile, you want to make sure that you give the proper attribution to where you're getting the tile, okay? Remember this is open source, but again, you have to put the credit where it deserves. Okay, so this is gonna show at the bottom of the map and I'm gonna show you that once we load this up in the UI. Now, the only thing that we're missing is the tile and you can get tile online. Like you can just search for leaflet tiles and you will find some free ones. So let's go back to the browser and um, let's duplicate this and do leaflet tiles free, for example. And you can see that there's a bunch of options where you can get free tiles. You can, you know, open them out and check them out if you want. Uh, for example, this one is a good one. So for example, I can just use this one right here. You can see the, the extension is PNG. If I zoom in, oops, oops, can't zoom in on that one. But anyways, I can just copy this. So that's gonna give me a tile. And this is the attribution by the way, but I'm just giving you an example. So let's go back to the application and I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that in and here. So remove this and paste so that should be the tile and actually i'm just gonna make sure that we can see this exactly the way that it is and let me just remove and paste okay so the attribution very important don't forget it so now we have some kind of a tile remember we have defined two constant they don't have anything to do with each other so now what i'm gonna do after i define these two constant is to put that inside of the map so I can come down here and then I can do main layer that add to map. So add to and then I pass in the map. Okay, so that's gonna be the map that I define, the constant that I define up there. So now something should occur when we go and look at the browser. But before, remember, we have to call this guy right here. So let's copy this. 
go up here and we get the user here and it's maybe after this so we can say this that paste in here this that user that coordinates okay so we're passing in the coordinates here we know that exists on the user and it's gonna load everything by looking at the div in the ui and then put it on this specific location and then put the attribution the tile and everything so let's go back and see what that looks like and i don't need this anymore and clear refresh okay so we have our map as you can see here but it's kind of all over the place because we didn't use the css that we were supposed to use one last thing that i forgot to show you is to set up the css for this so let's go inside of the main style that css and in here we have to do import and pass in the left lead so we don't need all of that we want to do tilde which is going to point to the nose module and we want to do leaflet forward slash distribution forward slash leaf let that css okay so this is really important we have to bring in a bunch of leaflet css so now if we go back you can see now it looks better Okay, so the map is here. This person is in Antarctica. So let's go back and click on here. Okay, this person is again somewhere in the middle of the ocean. Now, the only thing that we're missing is a marker. Okay, so the map is placed in the middle of that specific coordinate, but we don't have a marker yet. So let's go ahead and place the marker. So let's go back to the app. We don't need this anymore. Close, close. So the marker is going to be pretty much the same thing. So we're going to define another constant, call it marker set it equal to leaflet that and then we're going to call the marker so marker and then again we're going to give it the coordinates so coordinates let's just copy this because it's going to be the same wherever we center it is where we want to show the marker after that we need to give it an icon so we're going to pass in another object we're going to say icon and this is going to be uh this that marker and I'm gonna define this in a second. Okay, so that's gonna be for the marker. And then we have to add it again to the uh, to the map. So we're gonna say marker, add to, and then pass in the map. So the main map that we define. And then we can do bind, pop up, and here we can pass in a string. So I'm gonna pass in a string interpolation. I want to say user location is at that specific location. So I'm gonna do dollar sign, this, that, oops, I need to put opening and closing curly braces. So this, that user, that, and we want the first name and close that. And let's do apostrophe and then location. That's gonna give us the little message on the pop up. And then we can do open pop up. And that's going to make sure the pop-up is open whenever we access the page. So that's everything we have to do for this marker. The only thing that we have left is to use this name right here and then define the actual marker. So I'm going to go down here, say marker, and then we're going to set it equal to a new leaflet that icon. Okay, so this is supposed to come from the library. And again, this takes a, an object with a bunch of uh, properties in it. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in so you guys can see it and paste. All right, so we give it an icon URL, which is just some URL that I found on the internet, and then the size anchor, pop up anchor, and then the shadow, which is another, just a little shadow. You can paste those URLs in the browser and you'll see what they're like, and then the shadow size. So that's gonna be our marker here. I'm gonna collapse this for more room. So this should load the map and show the pop up, and it's gonna open the pop up with that message, like the first name of the user's location. So now if you go back and you can see Clara's location. Go back again, refresh, view, and here's the location of that person somewhere in the Arctic somewhere. But it doesn't really matter. So now everything is working. We click here. This guy's in the middle of the ocean. Mary Lou Mitchell. Uh, let's see where they are. They are in the South Pacific. Uh, let's see. Yep. South uh, Australian ocean I don't know but there are somewhere in the ocean and you can see the attribution at the bottom here so that's really important because this is not your tile so you have to give the appropriate attribution and if we go back here again refresh view another person in the middle of the ocean oh no this person is in somewhere in Antarctica all right so everything seems to be working all the functionalities are implemented and I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of how you can build an application like this 
One last thing that I want to do is to format the date of birth of the users. So if I go to view the users and you can see this, this is not very human readable. So let's go ahead and fix this with angular pipes, which is really convenient. So let's go back to the code. So let's uh, go back here and I'm going to go ahead and scroll up a little and we're looking for the date of birth. So that's going to be up here. So date of birth. And instead of doing property binding, I'm just going to do string interpolation. So delete these. And in there, what I want to do is to define the curly braces and we want the date of birth, right? Make sure we have proper spacing here. So after the date of birth, we can put just a pipe and then we put the date pipe and then we passing a string. So let me scroll over so you guys can see. And then I'm going to pass in medium. Okay, uh, it's the medium date instead. So the medium date is gonna format this date in a very human readable way. And you can look up the pipes for date. There's a bunch of them and you can even create your custom one. The other things that I wanna fix, um, let's go back to the, let's go to the service. So inside of the service, um, instead of doing this, this is like the long way of doing this. A more elegant way to do this is to just, uh, let's go ahead and select everything and then I'm gonna press control D. And then I'm going to do delete. So we can just pass in the name of the function and we can delete that as well. So we're just passing in the function and by default, it's going to pass in whatever parameter that it's expecting here. And the other thing is we can now pass in the actual response. So you can see here we're passing in any. So we don't have to do that anymore because we know that we're going to get a response. So I'm going to paste that in there as well. And I think that's all we have to do. Let's uh, look at this uh, users here and we're going to pass this in there as well. So that's going to be the response. OK, so we're going to type everything because now we know exactly what we're getting. So I'm going to close these. So now if we go back, you can see now this guy was born on November 8, 1993. And you can do a quick Google search here. So if we do Angular date pipe and probably just click on that first link here. You can see that uh, if we scroll down, you can see all the different variations of it and what these gonna give you in terms of the format of the date. And the one we're using is the medium date. So that's the month, the day and the year. So it would be like June 15, 2015. All right, so that looks pretty good. And I think this is everything. So we've pretty much covered everything we said we would cover. Uh, let's just go back and look at our outline just to make sure that we touch on all these points. So introduction, we talked about that and we have the setup. So that's not really important. So for components, we saw event binding. So with the click event and then property binding and string interpolation and lifecycle by using the ng on init. There's a lot more, but since I'm just building an application, I'm not doing an actual Angular tutorial. Uh, we can't really dive into deep into these things because they're like will require uh, many hours. So we cover components, services. We saw that and directives. We saw the built in directives. So ng4 and ng if and routing. So we saw how to configure routing access this route and we also use the router outlet and everything. So that was good. And then we saw the resolver in action. So we talked about what resolvers are and we saw how we can build one and we can use it in a specific situation. So make sure you make use of resolvers because they make the user experience a lot better. And then we use ArcGIS, which is what we use to map the API information into the shape that we wanted to. So that was the use of ArcGIS. And then we saw the leaflet map and all this stuff that I just showed you with the map. Then that's what we did. And we also covered pipe, which I don't have on this uh, markdown file, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in whenever you get this uh, code and then you get the markdown, then you're going to see that we covered a little bit of the date pipe. There's a lot of different pipes, but the date pipe is like so convenient. You just want to use it every single time. Also, another thing that I didn't mention, the reason that this markdown file in the browser looks like this is because I'm using an extension. So if you look up to the top right corner, I'm using this uh, markdown extension here. So that's why it looks like it's it's a readme file on the GitHub repository, which is exactly what this is, just the dark version of it. So GitHub dark, and you can use any other themes that you want. This is a typical GitHub, but again, as a developer, I can't deal with this. It's too bright. So I'm going to use the dark version. So make sure you get this file and you can go through this, make sure you know what we're going to be covering. And this is the application that we built just covering as many of these things as we can. We didn't dive into deep into any of them, but that should give you a starting point to um, build your application and then maybe build something amazing that you can share with others. Or maybe you're going to build the next big thing. Who knows? The sky's the limit. I hope you guys enjoy this course and really 
if you have any questions, just go ahead and reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.